Okay, and we're back for our last video of the class. Um, so starting with the 1977 amendments, the Clean Air Act started to impose visibility standards. Okay, so think of smog, right? Um, and in the SIPs, the states are required to develop best available retrofit technology. Okay, so you know they have to retrofit existing sources to eliminate things like haze and plume blight. So plume blight, um, it's kind of like a smoke, you know, if you think of a smokestack, the smoke going out there, right? Um, and then th they kind of go out and there's no mixing. So let's find an example of plume blight. Um, we've all seen that, right? Smoke coming out of a smokestack and just kind of like going on forever. So click on picture for a larger image. If you are unable to see it from the screen, the link is in the PowerPoint. You can go in after you watch this to see it, but you see this big line of like pollutants. That's like an example of plume blight there. The other one is, you know, regional haze, which is also known as smog. And we've all been around on hazy days, but um, let's see. We have an example here. Yeah, so if you look over here, this is the Smoky Mountains, right? <laughs> um, and the level of haze in 1990 versus 2012. So that's kind of some interesting stuff. Right, because the 1977, they started that, and then this program was started in 1985 to actually reduce it. So by 2012, it was reduced. Um, so that is, you know, so visibility standards are part of the Clean Air Act under the 1977 amendments. Okay, so the big thing um, at the end is how the hack do we enforce these requirements under the Clean Air Act? So we have administrative, so th there is teeth to this. It's not just like, oh, states, you have to do this. Um, but administratively, so an EPA can bring an enforcement action under the Clean Air Act. And if a source is you know, not not following the terms of their permit or operating outside of a permit, they can go after them for civil penalties, um, $200,000 or more in civil penalties. Um, they are given notice. They have 30 days to request an, a hearing, the, the um, accused parties, and then there would be an administrative hearing and you'd have to like, you know, uh, exhaust all your administrative re remedies before you can get to court on this. Uh, sometimes if there is a violation, the EPA and the source will, you know, come up with some sort of agreement. They call it a consent agreements on how they're going to fix it. And that is permitted under the Clean Air Act. So that's like your administrative stuff. Then we have these private citizen suits, right? We've talked about this uh, throughout the semester that sta the statutes al allow private citizens to bring a lawsuit if they think that a source or a facility is not complying with the Clean Air Act, including the EPA, right? They can bring um, a case against the EPA if they think the EPA isn't doing their job under the Clean Air Act, like, you know, getting their NEAQs in or something like that. Um, but it's only for, you know, tort damages, not, you know, civil rights or something like that. Um, and then criminal cases. Okay. So then the state, the state's attorney or the U.S. attorney, if they believe that there are intentional violations of the C Clean Air Act, um, or they have somehow defrauded the EPA making false statements, doctoring their results, doctoring their testing, um, or, you know, releasing toxins that, you know, put someone in imminent danger of death or serious injury, knowingly doing that, it's $250,000 fine and 15 years in jail. And if it's negligent, it's a hundred thousand dollar fine and you're in jail. So there's, you know, all of the, all of the enforcement options are there 
under the Clean Air Act. Um, so obviously there's a big incentive for companies to comply with their permits and the, the requirements that the state and the Clean Air Act impose on them. So they will have their own internal compliance people, right? Who conduct audits and inspections um, and make sure that they're complying. They have people who do the record keeping um, internally and um, nobody wants to be held in violation of a permit because you could lose your permit. Okay. Um, next thing under Clean Air Act is our mobile sources, right? So we've dealt with the, the stationary sources under these SIPs. Um, so mobile sources, cars and trucks. So um, the EPA under the Clean Air Act can regulate emissions, tailpipe emissions from trucks and cars. They can impose performance standards on vehicles. Uh, they regulate the fuel. I think that's a quiz question. So if it, yes, they can regulate fuels um, like, right, we no longer have leaded gasoline, right? So we, that is a regulation of the EPA under the Clean Air Act. Um, they encourage the use of public transit. Um, there are currently limits on cars and light duty trucks. So, you know, SUVs and personal trucks. Um, they limit, and these are, you know, numerical limits, hydro hydrocarbons, nit nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, and formaldehyde. And now, right, since 2011, there are additional standards for greenhouse gas emissions, right? After mass versus EPA, we have additional standards for mobile sources. Um Clean air, right? Po uh, the po politicians, their policies align with their parties. It's hard to pass legislation. So we're working with what we have. Um, we know that everything has been done in the past three or four administrations through executive orders and agency see either more regulations or lack of regulations, you know, reversing the regulations from the prior administration. Um, and, you know, these days too, with regard to our air and our environment, we're working more in a global fashion, you know, with um, these United Nations summits and things like that. Oh, I just went over this. Okay. I don't know why I have that down twice. Sorry. I must have copied it and not deleted it. Okay. Um, this is just a little funny cartoon. What if it's a big hoax and we created a better world for nothing? Ha ha. Funny. Okay. Um, paralegals who are working on cleaner act stuff. Um, a lot of it might be, you know, litigation. If there are, you're, you're either working with an environmental group to claim that someone has not complied with the Clean Air Act. So then that's just your standard paralegal stuff, right? Discovery, e-discovery, summarizing documents and de depositions, working on the trial with exhibits. Um, discovery would be very document heavy and technical heavy in a Clean Air Act type case. You'd be working at the permits, you'd be looking at testing data and air and um, probably working with expert witnesses to, to help you out there. Uh, compliance work is another issue to work with a company to make sure that, you know, that their record keeping and document management is up to snuff, um, maybe help them with permit applications. So that's kind of the things that, um, an environmental law paralegal would work on it, under the Clean Air Act. I have, what is this, 8-13, there's another one where there's a little, oh, yeah, so, um, oh, I know what this was. So the author put together, and you should, this exhibit 813, you should take some time and look at it. Um, it is, you know, the, the author saying that writing this chapter was tough on her because it is, it's a confusing act, right? It's very multi-tiered and, and, kind of like a Frankenstein um, where we're every, everything's just kind of added into it uh, as issues arise. And um, because again, because no new legislation has been passed on this. Um, 
so the author put together a little scenario with her paralegal of, of some work that the paralegal would do with regard to a, a permit for a new plant in, in, an, in an area. So I would, you know, take some time to look at that. And if this is something that interests you to um, see if it's, it, it, see what, you know, a day in life would be for an environmental law, law paralegal on an assignment related to the Clean Air Act. Okay, so that's it. Um, I guess the only thing we haven't really covered is the quiz, which is in the module. And that's it. Uh, I will be back next week and we'll work on our next module. Have a great week.